Hey everyone, it's Justin here. This is a instruction video for the guided study with me that I've created. You can find a link to that one in the description. The idea is that you watch the guided study with me video while you are studying and it's going to go through the timings and what you should do at each stage and then you can use, well, study with me, I guess. Uh, and then this video is the one that tells you what to do during those phases. The difference between normal study with me's and then the one that I've created is that the techniques are not the most straightforward or intuitive to use unless you've already had prior training or you've been watching a lot of my content. So I'm gonna go through and explain how that guided study with me is structured, why it's structured that way, what you should do at each phase, and then you can go away and watch that study with me video while you're actually studying and not get distracted by uh, explanations and instructions during it. So the idea with that study with me is that it's broken up into a couple of different phases. The first thing is the general prep phase. And during the prep phase, uh, it's just about making sure that we're in the best situation before we start studying. And what we're really talking about here is optimizing our environment. So making sure that we've got a nice workspace, distraction free, uh, you know, we're, we're able to focus in. I would recommend having something like water or tea or coffee or something with you. I usually like to have one hot beverage and then one cold beverage. It just makes me feel good, don't ask me why. The next thing is to make sure that we are proactively trying to eliminate any distractions that we can predict. So this means putting your phone and things on do not disturb, your computer on do not disturb, telling people that may be physically around you, don't disturb me. Uh, and just doing what you can to make sure that during your focus session, there isn't going to be something preventable to take you out of flow. The other thing that I'd recommend is that in that video, there is some white noise that's playing as well. This is designed to help you focus. So I would recommend watching that video with headphones on if you can. The next part after we've done the preparation is to do five deep breaths. And the reason we're doing these five deep breaths is uh, to create a focus ritual. It's like a routine activity that you do before you enter into a focused state. Not only is there some evidence to say that really deep, slow breaths is helpful for helping us focus and relax, but it also can be created as almost like a pre-focus ritual, which means that the deep breaths over time slowly help us to condition ourselves into entering into that focus zone. It's not enough just to do the deep breaths. Um, you have to actually try to let yourself feel that as you are breathing out, you are getting a little bit more calm, a little bit more focused, and more zoned in with each breath. I would also recommend doing a like max inhalation. And the way that you do this is you take a deep breath in, you try to use your diaphragm to breathe, breathe in. So don't breathe in like, like that, but breathe in outwards. You can't really see because you can see here. There you go. So you're breathing outwards with the diaphragm. Um, and then once you're breathing all the way, then you breathe in again. So and then that allows you to get that extra level of inhalation to get that maximum breath and then a slow exhale. And then you do that five times and across the, each breath, you try to think of yourself getting more and more focused in. After you do your deep breaths, which naturally doesn't take that long, uh, we're starting our first studying phase, which is scoping. Scoping should only take a few minutes. And the idea with scoping is that you're just going to go through your resources and you want to have really all of the resources laid out already. This might be a textbook, it could be a, uh, you know, lecture slides, it could be a, um, you know, a course guide, articles online, whatever it is. Go through very, very quickly and just pick out and write down what you think are the main, most important concepts. So uh, you'd, you'd create essentially like a Word document you might type this out if you'd like, with just a list of the most important concepts and keywords. You don't have to get it fully right. It doesn't have to be like mega comprehensive. If you can get what seem like generally the most important, that's going to be enough to work with. 
again, you really can't do this part wrong. I would recommend that if you're doing a reasonable study block, aim to get at least 10 different keywords on this page and probably not more than 20 or 30. So again, it's not about getting every single bolded word on there. It's about being a bit more discerning about what you think is the most important and, and starting with that. So after we do that for a few minutes, we're then moving on to the next step, which I've talked about a lot in my other videos and I've decided to just give this a name which is called maybe mapping. And I say maybe mapping because what you're doing here is just a hypothesis. The idea with maybe mapping is that we're gonna take the items and the keywords that we had just scoped out, we're gonna look through those words and we're going to create a hypothesis on how we think those words might be connected with each other. We wanna to try to create some very basic scaffold that's a technical term for it. The idea here is that it's just a maybe. You don't have to be right. In fact, you're almost definitely going to be wrong, but it's just getting our brain thinking about how it all fits together in a big picture. And having that big picture reference point is gonna be hugely beneficial as a priming step before we get into the deeper studying. It's gonna make content less overwhelming, it's gonna make our memory better. It's one of the most beneficial things that you can do for studying, and it's one of the things that less efficient learners commonly skip because they don't understand the value of it. They're just like, oh, I just need to get through the content, I don't wanna waste time doing this. It's not a waste of time because when you invest your time to create a hypothetical scaffold and a mental model for you to think through, even if it's wrong, even if it's completely wrong, there is a strong benefit to helping you manage and process any new information that comes in after that. So uh, just spend, I would recommend spending around about 10 minutes or so trying to create a map. You're gonna be wrong, try to do your best. If there are words that you're looking at and you don't even understand the meaning of that word at all whatsoever, then just do a very quick Google search and just read like literally a couple of lines. You should never be reading or thinking about it for more than like 30 seconds. It's just enough for you to get a very, very general superficial understanding of that word to construct a maybe map. And again, it's not that you're trying to get it right, it's that you're trying to figure it out, create some kind of model, and then you can work off of that. If you find this process really difficult and you're like kind of paralyzed there, not able to map anything out at all, this is a very, very high yield thing that you will need to work on. It probably means that you're not used to relational thinking or higher order learning in general. And that's actually gonna be a limitation for your studying efficiency for life. This is something you have to learn to be able to do if you wanna become a more efficient learner, very black and white. So after we've done a maybe map, we should already have a general understanding about how some of these ideas might relate to each other. And that can, in some cases, make us naturally more curious about it as well. The next step after doing this is the evaluation. And this is the first round of evaluation that we're doing. The evaluation is the part where we're now going to go through and learn more about each of the key words. If you are more comfortable with this, you can actually start at whatever keyword you feel is the most relevant for you. If you're a beginner at thinking in this way, just start at the beginning. But every time you learn about one keyword or a concept, I want you to take a step back, look at your overall picture and ask yourself, how does this fit inside the overall picture? And there are a number of objectives that I want you to have on the front of your mind. You may want to even just have this like literally front and center. On the study with me video, you'll see that this actually pops up during the evaluation process all the time on screen, so you've got it as a reference. The idea with evaluation is that you wanna make sense of the information. You wanna make sense of it, which means we're trying to make it more obvious. We're trying to reduce our need for memorization, so anything that you feel, man, I need to repeat this and do it again and again for me to stick it in my brain, that's a red flag. We wanna think, how could I think about this? How could I connect it, create an analogy for it, integrate it into a network so that I don't need 
to do that repetition, or at least I don't feel like it's slipping away imminently. So we're creating analogies, we're actively comparing that concept with other concepts, and we're asking ourselves, how does it fit in the big picture? You want to do this after every concept or every keyword, because if you go through three or four concepts and then you take a step back to see how it integrates, it's much more overwhelming because you've got so many more pieces that you have to try to think about. It's much easier to say, do one concept, take a step back, integrate it with the big picture, see how that changes our mental model. Maybe if we've mapped it out first, uh, then we can, we can redo it. Uh, if you're at a point where your non-linear note-taking skills are still relatively new, then this may be something that you find a little bit more challenging, but just keep pushing at it. Non-linear note-taking, again, is one of those things that you really need to get good at because linear note-taking is just so, so limited. If you have not even tried non-linear note-taking before in the first place, then I would very strongly recommend checking out my video on uh, non-linear note-taking before doing the study with me because otherwise you, you're really going to struggle a lot. So this evaluation process involves a lot of back and forth. You're going to your keyword list that you've created, you're going to your textbook or references or lecture slides or Google search, you're exploring it, you're, and after you've understood that concept, you're then straight away going, okay, take a step back, how does that fit within my big picture? You're remapping, moving things around, adding other arrows, thinking about it. A lot of this time is spent in your head, just thinking and trying to put the puzzle together. Okay, it should feel like you're trying to put a puzzle together. And then once you feel like, okay, I think that's how it fits, that makes sense to me, then you're gonna move on to the next keyword, and then go back, evaluate, you know, learn more about it, and then add it to your map, and then think, okay, well, how does that fit with what I've already got on my map? Or the other things, how does it fit in the big picture? You know, refine it a bit, add more arrows, move things around, and then once you feel like that makes sense, we're going back to the keyword. So we're doing that process again and again. A lot of this time is spent just in our heads, thinking, and then refining and consolidating and simplifying the map as we go. You absolutely, absolutely want to have the feeling that as you are learning more, the map is becoming easier and simpler to understand. The amount of overwhelm you feel should go down as you keep studying. If you find that as you are studying, it's getting harder and harder to keep track of what's going on, it means that you're either not pulling out to look at the big picture in, like often enough, or when you are, you're not simplifying it to a level that makes sense enough before you move on. This is something that we call multiple element interactivity, which is part of cognitive load theory, which is the idea that when there are too many things that our brain is trying to process, it struggles and enters into overload, which is a detrimental effect on our learning, memory, efficiency, understanding. So we want to make sure that when we learn something, we're then exerting mental effort and time to simplify it and consolidate it to a point where we can look at it and think, yep, I feel like that makes sense to me. And then we're ready to move on. We don't wanna just be overloading, 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 and overloading, because even though we may be covering content physically very quickly, in terms of what's happening in our brain, we're actually gonna be operating a very low efficiency, and you're gonna have to pay the consequences of that in future sessions because you've forgotten half of everything that you've learned, and that's ultimately the biggest waste of time. So after we do our evaluation period, which lasts usually at least 30 minutes, maybe potentially more if you're really focused, then we move on to questions. When we do the questions part, we want to deliberately think about what are the gaps in my knowledge right now? What are the things I'm most curious about? And if you're not really curious about something, try to be curious about something. And we're gonna create a list of questions that are the most pressing on our mind that reflect the direction that we're thinking in. Because after the questions, we're gonna take a break. So the questions are really good as almost like a, here's a current snapshot of what I'm thinking about, where I'm curious at, where I want my mind to be directed towards. And then when we come back into the session, we can use the questions to springboard ourselves back into that deep flow state very quickly and pick up from where we left off. You can have, you know, as few as three or four questions, 
I would probably not spend you know, too long on this, just a few minutes writing down some of the pertinent questions. After we have written some questions, we're now going to enter into an active relaxation period. Active relaxation means that we are doing something in our break. The active relaxation part is important because we don't want to then go off and watch like a like your favorite Netflix show or uh, get into like a really deep meaningful conversation with someone that's going to take ages or play your favorite online game. Those are not things that even though they may be relaxing, they're not things that are going to help you to get back into a flow state after the break. Obviously, if you don't have any more time to study and that's your session done, you can go do whatever you want. But if you need to come back into another session straight after this, then uh, you want to make sure you're doing something that's somewhat productive during this time, but not mentally taxing. So what that means is that this task needs to have a low level of cognitive load, otherwise known as mental effort. However, it should be something that is generally productive. A great example of this is actually housework, cleaning your room, organizing something. These are methodical, you could think of them as almost like tedious, but mindful tasks that don't require lots of thinking. If cleaning your room makes you mega stressed, then maybe don't do that, do something else instead. Another really good one is to just take a walk, go for a stroll. Getting some kind of movement or physical activity in is really beneficial. And in fact, you can even take the questions that you wrote before your break with you on a walk. And then while you're walking, just generally think about those questions and what the answers might be. We're almost creating a mini maybe map just in our brain. And again, we don't want to be like super, super focused on this. We do want our brain a chance to just relax, cool off, but still stay in that productive, intentional mode. Once our active relaxation time is up, we're then going to move back into the next session. And as before, we want to start with having some nice deep breaths. And just as before, trying to get into the zone with each breath. And then after your fifth breath, we're then moving back in. And this time we're starting straight with the questions that we had left over. We'll spend some time to explore the questions and try to see what the answers to those questions are. This may naturally lead you into the next phase, which is another round of evaluation. Essentially what this means is that we're picking up from where we left off. We're moving on to the next key concept, the next key word, the next part in our material. And we're going to just continue going through that exactly the same process as before and just continuing to build on our map and get a deeper and deeper understanding of things, but still keeping things relatively big picture. Depth, complexity, technical detail. These are things that happen in layers. And only once you've got a broad understanding at a big picture, then do we move on to a deeper understanding at a big picture. And then we move into the progressive le levels of detail. You should never ever really be focused on fine granular detail when you are first starting to learn something. If you can't already explain it in simple terms, don't move on to trying to explain it in more complex terms. Work with the simple one first, master the simple, then master the intermediate, and then master the advanced, and work in that way across the entire topic, and it's gonna be much more beneficial for your learning efficiency as well as for your memory. Another thing that we can do during this evaluation period, which is different to what we were doing before, is that we can potentially start offloading some material if we need to onto a memorization tool such as flashcards. So if there is a particular detail that you think, this is really detailed. I don't see how it fits into the big picture really at all. It just seems like a very, very specific technical thing that I probably have to end up root memorizing. Then we can make the decision to then put that into our flashcards as we go and not have to worry about it too much. We can continue to move through that big picture, higher level conceptual stuff instead. And again, we do this process uh, for the, the bulk of the session and we move back into leaving ourselves some questions exactly like we did before, thinking about where our gaps might be. And then we move into another round of 
active relaxation. And this cycle basically just repeats themselves. This is a cycle that we would continue to work through every successive cycle. And when we move on to a new topic that is now falling outside of what we initially had scoped out before, then we would start again from this stage where we're actually scoping it. And if obviously it's a whole new day, a whole new session, we have to start from the beginning where we're actually doing the preparation as well. So this general cycle of studying is something that you can apply really for any subject that you're learning. It is stronger for subjects that are conceptually very dense. Uh, so for some subjects like studying mathematics, uh, coding, things that are really procedurally heavy, this type of flow may not work the best for you. There's variations to this that uh, might be more relevant. But for any type of conceptual material, uh, medicine, anatomy, uh, you know, basically all the STEM subjects really, um, history, economics, philosophy, uh, accounting, these subjects are going to be ideal for this type of flow. It involves a lot of scaffolding, it involves active management of your cognitive load, it involves elements that are made famous by things like Pomodoro or Flomodoro, which is the work, rest, timing, and taking active relaxation. We've got priming involved in it, we've got nonlinear relational note taking. So there are a lot of things in this that are gonna be very, very beneficial for your memory, for your engagement, your actually even enjoyment of studying the topic. And ultimately, it's gonna save you time and make you a better learner. So with the instructions out of the way, you are now ready to go and do your actual studying. Check out the guided study with me video, the link is in the description, and happy studying.